welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that I've been given the pleasure to introduce myself to you, I'm Vanessa Semina and welcome to the fam. So you guys, today's reading is another one of my fun, nosy types of readings and it is all about what you did not expect people to think about you. So that is a really nosy topic. I think we can all agree on that. So in order to help you figure out exactly what you did not expect people to think about you, but they still think about you, I have prepared four groups that you can choose from and I would like you to pick one of these four groups intuitively. However, if you feel drawn to multiple groups, if you feel like the black tourmaline as well as the rose quartz just really gel with you, then don't be shy to tune into two readings because your personal reading could be a mixture between two groups. And I wouldn't want you to miss out on some information that is juicy. Another disclaimer, I'm not trying to have anybody leave this video butthurt, feeling sad or down, or like they never wanna to talk to anybody in this world ever again. That is not the point in this video. However, I will be 100% honest. So if you're here for an honest tarot reader, for a honest reading, then you're in the right spot. But before I get into the groups, I wanna let you know about something really fun. I'm giving away free pouches filled with crystals up until Christmas just because I love you guys. So with each physical order that you place on my website, buildablelife.com, which is linked in the description box, I will add a crystal pouch where you will receive six different types of amazing mini crystals. So the crystals that I'm giving away with each physical order are the following. We have a black tourmaline, we have a mountain crystal, we have a orchid calcite, an amethyst, some rose quartz, as well as a sodalite. So a really nice mixture that is small and handy enough to just fit in your pocket, or you can, of course, leave the crystals in the pouch that you get with them. Guys, this is a super cute deal. Make sure that you don't miss out. And for all of the orders that were placed within the last 48 hours, do not worry, do not panic. I have already added your free crystal pouches to your orders. So regarding the four groups, I have prepared the following crystal for you. We have the clear quartz, the rose quartz, the red jasper, as well as the black tourmaline, but the timestamps are down below in the description box, as well as pinned to the comment section for easy access for all of my beautiful little unicorns. Because you guys know, I just want to enrich your life and give you value with each and every one of my videos. So I'm going to be starting off with the first group, which corresponds to the clear quartz, and to all the other groups, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. Hello group number one and welcome to your reading. So you chose the clear quartz group number one and I'm so excited to be conducting this reading for you about what you didn't expect them to really think about you. So I have three decks of cards that are going to help us figure out exactly what people are thinking. But let's start off with the first card that you picked. We have the Page of Shells. So in the Page of Shells, I see here that you didn't expect people to find you as inspirational as they really do. When they see you, they see dreams. They see you chasing things that they may never have the guts to chase and they find you inspiring. They find you to be somebody that they look up to and that they would like to be or like to be around, if you know what I mean, group number one. So you may not feel this way. You may not think of yourself as someone who is extremely inspiring, but this is not about how you see yourself. This is about how they see you. But let's move further into your reading. And then we have the Six of Crystals. So in the Six of Crystals, one thing that I see here is that they see you as somebody very gracious. You may have not expected as many people to see you as so graceful and someone who is really thankful for everyone that they have in their life. You may feel like you're a little bit more introverted or a little bit more standoffish, but people see you here as someone who is very good at collaborating with other people. You're good at teamwork and people like to have you in their team. They find that having you on their team, having you in their corner is always beneficial. So you're probably also a very loyal person, group number one. Then we have the Ace of Feathers as well as the Two of Feathers. Okay, two cards of feathers, which indicates a strong connection to air signs, so that may be the case for you. Either way, in the Two of Feathers, first and foremost, I see that you're somebody who has direction. People find that you have your life together and you know where you're going. So as I said, this does not have to be true for you. You may think 
to yourself, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just trying to do life. I'm just trying to do adulthood. And you know what? As long as I'm able to feed myself, to keep a roof over my head, I am proud of me. And good on you, group number one, okay? Feel free to be proud of yourself for that. Not everybody is capable of that. Not everybody has accomplished that. And it already takes a lot out of you to be responsible even just to that degree. And why I say even just is just because we live in this culture in this day and age where we're being expected to be so perfect and have our careers on a million miles an hour in our early 20s or late 20s or 30s and it's just like when do you live and people want you to have job experience but then you come straight out of school and they say you need an education but where do you get the experience if everybody wants experience but you have to start somewhere, which means that everybody starts at no experience, if that makes any sense. You guys always get what I mean. And it's just like things contradict themselves so much. But in the Ace of Feathers, I see here that people find you to be somebody who still maintains mental clarity. You're still a person who can focus on what they want and who doesn't let the noise get to them. So you're probably not one who tunes into the media that often. You're probably not somebody, group number one, who is too concerned with mainstream issues. You really want to know what's going on behind the scenes and whenever you see a big catastrophe on the news, you ask yourself how many other catastrophes are happening in other areas of the world where the news did not find it important enough to pick that up. Meanwhile, we're talking about buildings that are caught on fire that are worth millions or billions and that is the biggest concern when there are other people who are starving who would really need security and that is probably why you're somebody who would rather think for themselves who would rather conduct their own research and that is why people see you as somebody with a steady head on their shoulders who knows what they're doing because you always try to see other viewpoints you're never just like okay this is what i'm seeing because this is what i'm being offered by mainstream media you always try and broaden your horizon. Then we have the Nine of Hearts. So in the Nine of Hearts here, we have fulfillment, harmony, as well as protection. People definitely may envy you for your love life, maybe your family life. They may envy you because they feel as though you have a lot of love in your life. You have people who look out for you and there's a lot of growth always going on around you. And that is something that a lot of people wish for and hope for. So there could always be a little bit of envy in people's thoughts and people's minds when they think about you and you will obviously not know this because they would never tell you group number one. Then we have yin and yang, so a harmonious sort of situation. I see balance. People, as I already said, they see you as somebody who has a good head on their shoulders and also somebody who is balanced. The only reason why you're Someone who is so well put together to other people is because you take time to really rethink things. You're somebody who maybe meditates, who maybe engages in physical activity, not because you want to be ripped or skinny or anything like that, but because you know it's good for you mentally and other people notice the vibration that is around you because of that because you truly do vibrate on a different frequency when you take care of yourself when you make sure that you're exercising you're eating properly not because of an exterior motive but because you want to be healthy you want to feel good and you want that to vibrate throughout your life and your decisions and it's paying off group number one then we have galactic guidance so one thing that i see here is that people think that you're somebody who has a lot of support. People think that you have a whole sort of troop of people behind you, that the universe is always behind you. You are lucky, luckier than they are, and that everything just goes smoothly for you. And as I said, this does not have to be how it really is or how you see yourself. This is just how other people see you and the point of views that you did not expect. So people definitely feel like your life is probably a lot easier than it is. Then we have a celestial assistance. So when one thing that I see here is that they feel as though you're constantly being guided and that you're probably a person who is very enlightened, somebody who is very spiritual, somebody who does not need to ask very often and receives. So sort of like a master manifester. Then we have releasing as well 
as trust. So in releasing, one thing that I see here is purification as well as cleansing. So they definitely find you somebody who is easy to talk to, somebody where they do have this trust, where, where you help other people overcome their doubts, their insecurities, and you're able to be persistent enough to tell them over and over again that no, actually you are amazing. Actually, you can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. So you're kind of like a rock to a lot of people. That is one thing that I see when people aren't envious of you or aren't trying to sort of be around you or be with you for the wrong reasons let me point that out um, when people aren't sort of wishing almost bad upon you they almost wish as though like why are things so easy for her or him why is everything so easy for them I wish things were easier for me and they would stop having such a streak of luck and as I said I'm going to be completely honest in this reading with you there are people who look at you and feel that way and I want you to know that that is one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is just all of the people who find you to be an amazing, trustworthy rock, somebody where they can get really good, mature advice from, and someone who is able to also like cleanse them in a way you're able to get negative, reoccurring thoughts and patterns out of their mind and their life just through your encouraging nature, just through the fact that you're so empathetic, group number one. So that is one thing that I find very amazing about you that I never want you to lose. So group number one, this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you found it insightful. I hope that it gave you a little bit of peace of mind or some new tidbits of information that you may have not known prior to tuning into this reading. And I will see you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello group number two and welcome to your reading. So you chose the rose quartz group number two, which is the stone of love as well as friendships. But let's move into your reading to figure out exactly what people think about you that you may not have expected. So first and foremost, you chose the 10 of acorns. So group number two, in the 10 of acorns I see here, the people find you very responsible. Now you may have not expected that. You may feel like people see you more as a wild child or somebody who is rebellious, who isn't like everyone else. So that may be true, but at the same time, they find that you're still very responsible. You're still very reasonable. The ideas that you have for your life aren't crazy, they aren't inconceivable, you know what you want to do and if that's not a conventional thing then that is completely fine. As long as you are responsible enough and have the dedication to put in the work, the effort that you need to to become successful and to sustain yourself, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. So know that you are more inspirational than just the person who rocks the boat even if other people would never admit that and okay, let's see what's going on here. We have the Queen of Shells. So the Queen of Shells, this may be you okay the queen of shells represents a water sign but this could also be somebody close to you this could also be somebody who has had a lasting effect on you in your life so i want you to know in the queen of shells that she is somebody who is peaceful who is compassionate who is very empathetic and willing to give people a second third sometimes even a fourth chance dare i say so group number two know that if this is you this is an amazing way to be people see you as somebody who they can talk to as somebody who will understand and won't judge and someone who is very nurturing you know almost like these motherly qualities and maybe you are a mother to a dog, a cat, an actual little human baby, or maybe you're a paternal figure in general just to another living being, just to somebody else on this planet, and that sort of infused you with the know-how of how to treat people in a way that they feel taken care of. So that is one thing that people see in you and really appreciate within you. Then we have the Four of Feathers as well as the High Priestess. So I'm going to be starting off with the Four of Feathers here. And in the Four of Feathers, I see here that people can sometimes think that you're one who takes life a little too easy, who, yes, you're dedicated and you're responsible, but at the same time, it's almost like you don't worry enough. And this is not necessarily true. You may just worry internally. You may just be the kind of person who's freaking out on the inside, but you tell yourself, what is the point in freaking out on the outside? What is the point in letting everybody know that I am scared, that I am not sure what I'm doing? I might as well just chill. I might as well just see how things turn out and not stress myself out because that won't help the situation 
nor will it change the situation. And in the High Priestess, I want you to know that that so sort of authority over your emotions is pretty rare. And it is one thing that you only get when you truly like follow your intuition as well as when you're just being reasonable and real with yourself. When you tell yourself, well, why should I stress about finances right now when that's not going to make the finances any better or easier? It's just going to put stress into my life. So that is just an example, obviously group number two, but that is just a thought process that I can see within your reading. And in the High Priestess, furthermore, I want you to know that you have a lot of knowledge that you have gotten and you may not realize this because to you it is normal, but there are a lot of things that you know that you've maybe even taught yourself that other people don't know that is very valuable. But other people can feel it when they're around you. They can feel that there's something coming off of you that has this authoritative energy and they may be a little shy to talk to you about it and a little scared to ask you about it just because they're a bit intimidated and that is fine group number two. I just want you to know that you have to make use of this knowledge. If you've been taught by your family exactly how to be disciplined, dedicated, use that throughout your life. If you had to teach yourself how to be productive, if you had to teach yourself how to be a loving and worthy human being, how to feel worthy is what I mean, then make sure that you continue practicing that and that you make use of that knowledge. Then we have the night wind. So in the night wind, one thing that I see here is that people find you very fearless and you may not expect that because maybe in your opinion, you're just a little chicken if you know what I mean. But other people see you more as a tiger, see you more as a lion, somebody here who is able to let go of fear when it's really important and when they're able to actually accomplish something by just letting go of fear. So you do this in a very tactical way. People see this as you being fearful when there's nothing really to lose. So for instance, not wanting to eat something that you've never tried before, but then when it is about fear, say in love, fear of being alone if you break up with this person who is toxic or fear of not getting to the next point that you want to get at, at your work, you just take that fear and you crush it, okay? You're just like, whatever, fear is just a mental thing. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do in order to move forward. So you get to that point where fear is something that you just banish out of your life. Then we have perception. So one thing that I see here is that the perception that people have of you seems to be very inaccurate in many ways. I feel like as though people see you as this very mysterious person, this person that they maybe can't read, but what they really just need to do is just ask questions. I feel as though people may feel very intimidated by you. People may feel as though you may not answer that question, like you're someone who wouldn't give them the time of the day, but all they'd really have to do is just ask. And you may be struggling with something like a resting bitch face, which I have my fair share of uh, those struggles. So I can completely relate group number two, but don't allow that to stop you from trying to be a little bit more approachable, okay? There's being fake and then there's actually genuinely trying to be more approachable and trying to relax situations instead of allowing them to tense up and be awkward. But let's move further into your reading. We have empowerment as well as emotional freedom. So in empowerment, it is completely clear, group number two, that you are maybe a little too empowered for some people, especially if you're an empowered woman in a man's world. It could be that this is something that makes them insecure. This is something that makes them feel as though your strength is too much to handle. They would rather sort of, um, how should I say, diminish it. They would rather make it something that it isn't than just acknowledge it for what it is, which is willpower, strength, empowerment, all of these amazing things. But you know, whenever you shine, there are a lot of people who wanna rain on your parade, but we don't need to allow that to happen. Group number two, keep that in mind. Then in emotional freedom, one thing that I see here is that people see you as sort of a no BS taker, okay? You're not here to play games. You're not here to be pushed around. So people are equally kind of careful when they deal with you, as I said, you could be a little bit intimidating. And one thing that they think about you is, as I said, you're someone who knows what they want and you're not going to allow another human being to play with your feelings. So you may be laughing right now, group number two. You may be like, 
just ask my ex who played me like a fiddle or just ask my best friend who completely blindsided me. But that is the thing with you. You're very caring. As I said, you're willing to give multiple chances and that can sometimes put you in an emotionally compromised position. But that is not to be mistaken with you not taking BS from somebody who has not earned any sort of loyalty points from you whatsoever. That is a big no for you, group number two. And people see that, people realize that. Then last but not least, we have ocean of eternal love. So people definitely see you as somebody who is attractive. Okay, we have fertility within this card. We also have a very healing component. So you're definitely that wifey, you're definitely that husband material, okay? That unicorn that people just wanna boo up, that people just wanna be with forever. And you are a person who kind of restores other people. You kind of give people that oomph back, the energy back that they needed, and they appreciate that within you, group number two. So this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you found it insightful, interesting, maybe even a little motivational to keep doing you. Either way, group number two, wherever you are in this world, I wish you an amazing day or night, and I look forward to seeing you in one of my upcoming videos. Hello group number three and welcome to your reading. So you chose the red jasper group number three and I want to get straight into your reading about what people think about you that you did not expect. So first and foremost we have the king of feathers. So they see you as somebody who is very logical as well as justice loving. You're kind of like this authoritative figure, this figure that they come to when they need just like a logical little piece of advice and you may think to yourself wow that is so not me but group number three this is not about how you see you. This is about, oh, okay, this is about how they see you, but you didn't expect. But let's see what else is here within your reading. We have the nine of acorns as well as the four of shells. So in the nine of acorns, I see power. So this just kind of feeds into the king of feathers, as I said, kind of authoritative. The fact that when you make a decision, they feel as though it's final and they feel as though they can trust in that decision. And in the four of shells, I also see here the fact that you are somebody who does a lot of self-development and it shows. I see here that emotionally you're very stable and you're the kind of person who is willing to give other people tips on how they can maybe be a little bit more stable and a little bit more in a place that is healthy emotionally. So overall, I feel like there is a fine line here between people being a little bit intimidated or feeling as though you are too authoritative, too overpowering, and then being able to come to you and you're able to properly navigate that fine line. You're able to be the kind of person who is powerful and at the same time approachable. But let's see what else is up. We have love as well as the ace of shells. So in love, I definitely see here that there is a lot of trust People find it easy to like you, to love you, to trust you. This is something that you may have not expected just because you may have a hard time reading other people, but it is abundantly clear that others find you trustworthy and somebody where they would choose you as a first choice. And in the Ace of Shells, I see here also a lot of happiness. I see that you are the kind of person that they like to have around during festivities. So if they're celebrating their birthday, their anniversary, just any milestone in life, you're always a great addition to have. And people are always willing to invite you. They would always want to invite you, but they are also sometimes worried that you wouldn't show up. So you may not actually get invited as much as people would like to invite you just because they're worried like people almost feel as though they are unworthy to be around you that is the vibe that i'm getting here group number three then we have perception so i definitely feel here that people really need to get to know you until they can see past their insecurities so it may be that you're somebody who is very physically attractive or that you're somebody that people just look up to in general because you're highly educated, maybe you have an amazing job, or as I said, you're a very attractive person, which can be intimidating, and they just have to see beyond that before they can 
truly 100% open up and feel safe around you, which is sometimes hard for people to do. Then we have remembrance. So one thing that I see here is that you are somebody who brings up past emotions and feelings, okay? People feel as though they can talk to you about their childhood trauma. Maybe you've been through a lot in your childhood, maybe in a very abusive situation, and that makes you very relatable. That makes you somebody where people feel like they can open up and you will understand, you will not judge, you will just be there to listen and also give advice for the future. So this ties in really amazingly with love and the fact that there is a lot of trust there from other people. But as I said, sometimes it can take a little bit of time for others to open up just because they feel as though <laughs> they're not worthy of your time. I know it sounds so strange, group number three, but that's how it is. Then we have emotional freedom as well as reflective truth. So one thing that I see here in reflective truth is that people find you confident, people find you to be somebody who has a lot of love for themselves. So you may take very good care of your appearance or you may just be the kind of person who allows themselves to treat themselves. And this may reflect in your appearance as in you wearing nice things, always having your clothes in an impeccable condition. Maybe you take time to do your hair or your makeup or to shine, polish your shoes before you leave the house. So being very presentable already puts an image of you in other people's heads. And I want you to know that they also find you to be somebody who is very free. You're a very free spirit. This, just because you're well put together, it doesn't mean that you're uptight. People think of you as somebody who is very creative. And as I said, you're freedom loving. Then we have the root portal as well as exploration. So in exploration, I see that they find you to be very brave. They find you to be somebody who is not afraid to test boundaries as well as limits and then in the root portal I see here that there is a lot of vitality within you There is a lot within you that just exudes this fresh pumped up energy And I want you to know here that this stability that you give of fresh pumped up energy So by that I mean like you are a constant supply of good vibes basically group number three And people see that as something that they want to be around some people may almost find that necessary for them to live a breathe survive so this may reflect in a best friend a partner a parent that just constantly wants to be around you because they just love the vibe that you exude around them they need you they really want to be around you and you may not understand this because you're more of an independent person that is one thing that i see in ex exploration you don't need nobody group number three why did i say nobody like that i don't know but as i said you're very independent and Therefore, I want you to be a bit more empathetic towards people who may be a little clingy with you, who may be a little struggle to just let you do your own thing sometimes, who want to hang out with you more than you'd want to hang out with them, not because you don't like them, but because you just like to spend time by yourself as well, because you enjoy your own company. So have a little bit more understanding for that, and if you can, carve out more time for those who are really craving to be around you. So group number three, this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. I hope it gave you a little bit of peace of mind wherever you are in this world, group number three. Have an amazing day or night, and I will see you in one of my upcoming readings. Hello, group number four, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Black Tourmaline group number four, which is a really gorgeous, as well as protective and detoxifying kind of stone. So I wanna move straight into your reading to figure out exactly what they think of you, but you do not expect them to think of you. First and foremost, we have the Two of Acorns. So in the Two of Acorns, I see them feeling like you're somebody who is very connected, maybe somebody who is of a high social status or at least higher than them, which may make them slightly insecure and make them slightly feel as though life just flows easily for you because you have connections, because you know people who can help you out. They may even think that you've gotten to where you are right now because your parents are helpful or maybe wealthy or because you have friends the right sort of people within your life who have pushed you who have given you an easy way out in certain situations so know that that is one little part of how they see you but furthermore in the two of acorns they also find you to be somebody who's very focused and goal oriented so they may think that yes you've had it a little easier in life than they have or that you've had a little bit of help but at the same time they do see that you're the kind of person where if you want something 
if you can get help with it, why not get help with it? Or if you can have somebody just, you know, push you in the right direction, you will. You're not going to say no to that. Then we have the Eight of Feathers. So in the Eight of Feathers, one thing that I see here is that you're very solution oriented and other people think that about you as well. They don't see you hanging out too much with problems. They don't see you caring too much about issues. They see that you're somebody who is courageous, who just wants to solve problems, even if it means jumping over hoops or facing fears that other people would not necessarily want to face. Then we have a temperance as well as the three of shells. So in the three of shells, I see a time here of playfulness. So people find you probably a lot more playful than you think that you are and just celebration and bliss. So you may not be the absolute life of the party, but you are definitely a party guest that people like to have there because you're probably very entertaining, probably very ironic, or just somebody who is not even trying to be funny, but people find you funny. And I can I can relate with you, okay? Sometimes people say that I'm funny and I'm literally being dead serious. And I'm like, why are you laughing? I'm serious. Why do you think this is funny? So that is one thing that I see here for you, group number four, as well as just communication, okay? You're good at communicating. People envy the fact that you're probably a better speaker than most maybe even in a public speaking situation you are more secure in yourself as well as your wording than other people and in temperance I see here very much a harmonious kind of lifestyle a very much a lifestyle where everything is in balance so people see you as somebody who has a good life who has a life where things are going according to how they're supposed to go. So there may be a little a little bit of jealousy here. There may be a little element of where they feel as though like, wow, like, come on, like they can't be this perfect. They must have something that they're not good at or something that they struggle with. And temperance can also be an indication of struggles with alcohol, drugs, it's just any sort of um, addictive behavior, you know, shopping is part of that as well. Group number four, not trying to call anybody out, Food is also within that category, so they may also feel as though you could be struggling with something like an eating disorder or not being able to properly figure out just how much alcohol you can have. Or they may also think that maybe you're cheating a little by taking drugs that are giving you extra energy, okay? So they feel almost as though like, wow, come on, something, something needs to be wrong with this person. They can't be this amazing. I mean, come on, there has to be a trick there. But let's move further into your reading group number four. We have evolution as well as the eternal dance. So in evolution, one thing that, that I see here is that people find you to be very adaptable. People find you to be somebody who is constantly growing and transforming and they probably never thought that you would get to where you are now, especially those who you may have gone to school with or just known at an earlier point in your life may have never thought that you would actually transform from who you were to who you are today. They may have thought way, way less of you and that is why now they're like, come on, she must have had some kind of help. Come on, he must have had someone put him in that position. He surely did not just work hard for that. So it's almost as though people cannot believe how far you've already come in your life and group number four, you may not feel this way about yourself. You may feel as though there's still so much to come, which is better for you to feel that way than to just be satisfied with where you are because evolution is all about that. It is about change, progression, just whenever life throws something at you, being able to find a way to solve those problems, to come up with solutions. As I said, you're very solution oriented. And in the eternal dance, we have movement. We have here just trying to find the path of least resistance. And that is one thing that other people see in you as well, that you're constantly on the go, you're constantly trying to improve, and you're constantly trying to find a way how your life can just exist of paths of least resistance where you're not battling with anybody or anything. You're just basically getting through life in a way that is the most comfortable, where you're able to balance your work, balance your spare time, your free time, your hobbies, as well as time with your friends and your family. 
then we have the magical realms. So one thing that I see here is that people may think as though you're very spiritual or religious, that you're very much into things such as crystals, such as meditating, and just that your belief is something that is very strong. So group number four, it may be true, it may not be true, it doesn't really matter. Either way, people feel as though just the fact that you're able to have so much faith and trust and confidence in something makes you someone that is maybe easily underestimated. So as I said, they may have totally underestimated that you would even get to this point in, in life, but they realize that they probably underestimated you and that one pointer that they could have looked at earlier that would have already had them know that you would have this glow up, that wouldn't have left them surprised at this point in time, as if they would have looked at already back then a few years ago or when they met you at the fact that you are very confident and you have a lot of faith in what you believe in, then they would have not been surprised at this point, but they just looked past that. You've probably been somebody who has had a very strong belief in something for a long time. So as I said, that could be religion. It could also be how you live your life, how your diet is. Maybe you've been into veganism or vegetarianism for a long time because you just do not believe in harming other beings for dietary needs. It could also be that you've had a very strong standpoint on environmental causes and people should have already seen way back when you started with that that you are a force that cannot be stopped and then maybe they wouldn't be so surprised and shocked today at how far you've actually come. And we have the majestic eminence. So one thing that I see here is the divine feminine. I see that your worth is something that is really high and intimidating to a lot of people. And just your feminine creative energy, the energy that is not so harsh, not so phallic, that is one thing that I see that is very prominent for other people within you. Then last but not least, we have forgiveness. So one thing that I see here is a sort of regeneration. So people see you as somebody who is very forgiving you're somebody who is able to move on for, from a situation and redemption is another thing and that people feel within you around you they feel as though you make it possible so group number four I feel as though you are somebody who yes on one end people did not expect to come this far but then at the same time it also kind of makes sense when they think about all the little indicators along the entire process of knowing you they all of a sudden realize wow I've been maybe underestimating this person far more than I ever expected and you still have a lot of amazing things to accomplish and I want you to keep in mind group number four that there's nothing wrong with forgiving and I want you to especially forgive yourself that is one thing that a lot of us struggle with when we make mistakes instead of properly working through them to the point where we can forgive ourselves and cleanse ourselves of any negativity that may have come with those mistakes we just kind of move on with life without properly dealing with those but i want you to open up that box that you put underneath your bed that you put somewhere in the corner of your room that you have not wanted to look at in months, maybe years, and face those situations where you know you have to forgive yourself or you have to move on. Don't just be forgiving to other people. Don't just be the person who gives everybody another chance but yourself. So group number four, this is a reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you found it insightful, maybe a little motivational. And wherever you are in this world, group number four, I wish you an amazing day or night and I look forward to seeing you in one of my upcoming videos.